When looking at Australia's theme park scene, one city stands out as a huge anomaly. Australia's largest city by population, yet only served by a small, albeit historic, amusement park with very little prospect for growth. While Luna Park Sydney is absolutely fantastic for what it is, it's wedged into a tiny plot of land in the city centre and limited by the heritage constraints on the site. It will always be the size that it is now and never grow into a major amusement park that can serve a metropolitan area of 5 million people. So why doesn't Sydney have a major park? Surely there is a market for a more large-scale amusement park in Australia's largest and most visited city. Well, there once was one, one that Sydney siders remember all too fondly. This is the story of Australia's Wonderland. Wonderland's history is tied with Luna Parks quite closely. In the 1980s, Luna Park suffered the most tumultuous period in its history. The Ghost Train Fire of 1979 and the flawed and corrupt ownership that followed led to multiple closures and reopenings of the historic park, leaving Sydney with no stable amusement park options. The park closed immediately after the Ghost Train Fire in 1979 reopening in 1982 before lasting only until 1988, closing again due to poor management and maintenance of attractions. Meanwhile, in the early 1980s, it was publicly revealed that a group of developers were looking to provide an alternative, as the possibility loomed that Luna Park's fate may become permanently sealed. There's a world I'd like to live in, a world I'd like to see. Where there's too much fun for everyone And still lots left for me Where there's magic on every corner And a smile on every face If I could just step out of this perfect dream Into this perfect place Wouldn't it be wonderful Walking hand in hand Wouldn't it be wonderful The developers, with the help of the New South Wales State Superannuation Board and a number of sponsors, were seeking to redevelop an area in the suburb of Eastern Creek in Sydney's west. The initial part of this redevelopment would be the construction of a 219 hectare amusement park called Australia's Wonderland. Later developments would also see the Eastern Creek Raceway open in 1990, which is still in use today. Wonderland opened in December 1985 with three themed areas, Gold Rush, Medieval Fair, and most famously, Hanna-Barbera Land, with attractions themed to the popular cartoon characters of Hanna-Barbera, including Yogi Bear, Scooby-Doo, and the Flintstones. The park's design drew heavy inspiration from Canada's Wonderland near Toronto, which was constructed by the same company, Taft Broadcasting, who would also transfer operation to King's Entertainment around the same time as Australia's Wonderland was being constructed. Many of the rides on opening day at Australia's Wonderland were clones of, or inspired by, Canada's Wonderland attractions, including the flagship roller coaster The Bush Beast, a mirrored layout of the wooden coasters designed by Curtis D. Summers at Canada's Wonderland, California's Great America, and King's Dominion. On opening day, the park also included a smaller wooden roller coaster targeted at younger riders called The Beastie, a large Interman drop tower named Space Probe 7, an inverting pirate ship ride, an Interman River Rapids ride, and several other large attractions. Immediately, Wonderland was a huge success. By 1988, the park was already looking to expand after just three years of operation, rebranding as Wonderland Sydney and adding a seasonal water park known as The Beach. In 1990, the park added a wildlife park, and in 1995, an a la carte style restaurant. During that time, Wonderland opened a Vacoma Boomerang in 1992 known as The Demon, a Log Flume in 1994, an Interman double Ferris wheel moved from Kings Island in 1989, and several other flat rides and attractions that would make the park notable as Australia's largest, with rides that were unique on a world stage. But something went wrong along the way. 
Despite resounding financial success, Wonderland's expansions would suddenly stop in the late 1990s and signs would begin to show that the park was desperately looking to downsize. So what went wrong? It all came down to a Malaysian investment group. The first major change for Wonderland Sydney came in 1992 at the peak of the park's expansion and success. All of the Taft Broadcasting Parks in North America were sold to Viacom and rebranded as Paramount Parks. However, at the time, Taft only owned a minority share in Wonderland Sydney due to the government and sponsor investment in its construction, and Taft's shares were bought out by Australian investors instead of Viacom. While Taft's former parks in the United States and Canada continue operation today under the ownership of Cedar Fair, the new ownership regime in Australia would only last five years. In 1997, the park was sold to Malaysia-based investment group Sunway. Immediately, Sunway's ownership of Wonderland became drastically more conservative in terms of marketing and expansion than the previous owners had ever been. Between the purchase in 1997 and the park's eventual closure in 2004, only one ride was added to the park, a cable car attraction named Skyrider relocated from the Sydney showgrounds. It was immediately clear that Sunway had much less interest in growing Wonderland than the previous owners had. Speculation suggests that the park had proven to be much more expensive and less profitable than Sunway anticipated, and this became particularly evident in 2002, when the park began closing sections and moving its rides closer to one another, with the goal of downsizing the actual scale of the park while retaining its most popular attractions. Several rides were also scrapped in this process. Very little transparency was ever given as to why Sunway refused to invest in a park that had been expanding rapidly just a few years earlier, but crowds and profits began to dwindle as the park offered little to entice visitors. Its location west of the city made it difficult for tourists to access from Sydney CBD, and when the park no longer offered anything new to entice repeat visitors or capture the attention of new ones, tourists lost interest in making the long trip west of the city. Meanwhile, Luna Park had made an ultimately ill-fated but briefly successful reopening in 1995, which briefly made the park a competitive option and much closer to the city. Wonderland's visitor stocks took a hit with the opening of the Arrow-designed Big Dipper at Luna Park, and while noise complaints and development disputes would force Luna Park to close again in late 1996, it had proven enough of a market distraction for Wonderland to need to re-establish their appeal in the Sydney market. As it turns out, Sunway did little to make that happen. After their failed attempts to downsize the park, Wonderland announced its closure, with the gates closing for the last time on April 26, 2004. If this park was at a high level of performance, you can absorb some of those challenges, but it wasn't, it wasn't in that situation at all. CEO Stephen Goldbraith infamously blamed the closure on a grocery list of different scapegoats. The September 11 attacks, the 2002 Bali bombings, the collapse of HIH insurance, the SARS and bird flu viruses, the Asian financial crisis, the collapse of airline ANSAT Australia, the Iraq war, and the 2003 bushfires. The Sydney Morning Herald famously responded that Sunway blames Wonderland's demise on everything except poor management. The park was completely demolished in September of 2005. Most of the rides were sold to other parks, with the signature attractions Bush Beast, Beastie and Snowy River Rampage all being demolished. Today, the site is an industrial estate, with the only remnants of what was formerly Australia's largest amusement park being a road named Wonderland Drive and a few scattered and abandoned remnants in nearby bushland. While every now and then a developer builds some excitement and media hype with talk of a rebuild, Wonderland Sydney is definitely dead and buried and its unfortunate tale is all the result of developers failing to invest in the park. While its location was a hurdle, and there were certainly financial difficulties to overcome, Wonderland had proven throughout its lifetime that it was capable of being a major drawcard attraction in Sydney and expanding rapidly. Sunway's management refused to make those investments to the park to draw crowds and keep the park successful. Do you have any memories of Wonderland Sydney? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when I upload my next video. If you're a football or soccer fan like me, you should subscribe to my football channel and to my weekly vlog channel. Links are both in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.